Okay, so this is growing my video game collection, episode 10. I'm going to start making these videos, dividing them up through the month. So instead of one big 20 minute video, it's going to be two 10 minute videos, streamline everything, make it a lot easier to watch, a lot easier to digest, half the games, double the amount of videos. Um, so let's get into the stuff that I picked up. First thing I want to talk about is a game that I got, my, my local flea market just closed. Um, so everyone was like going out of business. One booth had a Game Boy game that I needed, that I've been looking for, which is the real Ghostbusters. So I'm going to read the Wikipedia page about this because this game has changed uh, franchises depending on where it was released. So the real Ghostbusters, known in Europe as Garfield Labyrinth and in Japan as Mickey Mouse 4. The Japanese version is based on Walt Disney's Mickey Mouse, obviously. The European version is based on Garfield comic strips. And the North American version is based on the animated series The Real Ghostbusters and contains 10 more stages than the previous incarnations. Um, so this has changed throughout the entire world or whatever. It's a it's like a puzzle platforming game where you have to collect um, these stars. So there's a certain amount of stars in the level. They, there's more stars as the levels go up. You have to, Once you get all the stars, you get a key where you can leave out the door. You have to destroy blocks as you go and avoid enemies and walk up ladders and stuff. This game is actually pretty cool. I played this for quite a while. Um, this isn't the type of puzzle adventure game where I would play the entire thing through because it does kind of get boring as you go. But it's definitely a cool idea and it's cool that they, they in America it got the Ghostbusters skin or whatever because, I mean, the anime Ghostbusters series is pretty cool. So. Uh, yeah, that cost me five bucks at the uh, the flea market. So anyway, if you see it, pick it up. It's fun, but I don't see me ever fully playing through that game. There's, so there's a couple things I want to start doing with these videos as we go. There's could because there's specific things I'm collecting. I have a pretty large collection, so I'm kind of trying to hone down exactly what I am collecting. And one thing I want to start getting more of is Japanese uh, N64 games that never came to America. The ones that don't require a lot of reading. So. Uh, one of the one of the games that I just got was this is Puyo Puyo Sun 64. So if you guys remember Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, that was the American reskin version of Puyo Puyo for the Genesis. This is the same type thing where you have these colored droplet type things that fall from the top of the screen. When you connect four, it will destroy the block of four. It will throw. Uh, trash onto the opponent's screen uh, and then the, the things drop and you could try to uh, combo and whatever and try to have a huge thing but the, the point is just to outlast the opponent. Uh, this game is actually really colorful and there's an insane amount of different characters you can use. It's pretty crazy how many they put into this game. So this is the only Puyo Puyo game I've ever played besides Mean Bean Machine. Um, and it's pretty cool. I played this with Summers. We had a good time playing it. It's cool. That game only cost me $5, and that was including shipping from Japan. So there's some really cheap games that you can get that never came to America. Just to try out. Uh, you will either have to have a modded N64 for that, or just have a game where you can swap the back, because the region lock on an N64 is the back piece of the cartridge. Uh, the slots are in a different spot. Anyway, good game. Pick it up. Another thing I've been trying to collect is I've been trying to get all the Activision games for the Atari 2600. I started doing this a couple years ago when I got Dragster, and I just had such a blast playing it. And I have probably 15 now, so every time I see one, I'm trying to pick one up. This game is called Dolphin. Um, this is another game I want to read the description of, because when I put this game in, I had no clue actually what to do. Um, so I actually had to look it up. So, Dolphin. So Dolphin is a unique game that requires you to use your ears as well as your eyes to be able to play the game fully. You are in control of a dolphin who needs your help in swimming through the ocean, through the schools of seahorses, and being able to get the good currents, the arrows which are going in her direction, while dodging the hungry squid and the bad currents, which are the arrows going against her. You will hear a set of beeps before each school of seahorses appear, which is the dolphin's sonar. You must listen to the pitch to determine where you can swim through. The higher tones means you can swim closer to the surface, while the lower tones mean you can swim closer to the ocean floor. Um, that is pretty awesome. It's, it takes a little while to fully grasp the full range of all the different pitches to know exactly where you can go through, but it's definitely pretty, 
unique and awesome when, once you get used to it. Colliding with a seahorse slows, your do- slows down your dolphin and makes it easier for the squid to catch her, but she can protect herself by guiding into the currents that slow down the squid. Occasionally a seagull will fly by overhead. If the dolphin touches it, she will gain the ability to drive the squid off by ramming it. It starts the game back from the beginning with your score, and you just try to get the highest score you can. Activision games are very, very fun. Some of the most fun games ever, and they're some of the most simple. Dragster is like a three-second game that I've played tons and tons of times, like way more than I ever should have. Uh, so anyway, I'm trying to get those, so they're very, very cool. So this was Dolphin uh, for the 2600 Oh, that was a dollar. I found it in the box of Atari games, and I just asked the guy how much the ones were that didn't have prices on them, and he just said there's no prices to book. Another thing I've been trying to collect is Xbox 360 exclusive games that are good that I haven't... Um, that I don't have in my collection. There's not many shooters on the system, so it's not too hard to collect them all. There, I mean, there's a lot more outside the United States, but this is Raiden 4. I'm pretty sure there's two versions of this game. This one actually comes with its uh, disc, uh, sorry, with its soundtrack, and then the game disc. So I, this game is 25 bucks at GameStop right now. This ha- still had a 19.99 sticker on it, so they adjusted it down, and then I used some coupons or whatever. So this game came out to like nine bucks. Um, this game is absolutely beautiful. This is a port of an arcade game. There's actually more levels in this version than were in the arcade game. You know, they, they made some changes or whatever, and they brought it to the Xbox. I played this with Summers. It just looks beautiful. There's no slowdown. It's super fun. It becomes like a bullet hell game. This has the vertical monitor, so you have like the blank space on the sides, um, because that's how it was in the arcade. It's a beautiful game. It's very, very fun, and if you see this, definitely pick it up. It's, it's awesome. I went to a local game store, and they had two games that I that I needed there. One was uh, Madden 3DS, which I actually already ended up having, so I I paid ten bucks for that one. I just ended up selling it, um, so I could get this game for free. And this is NBA Hang Time. NBA Hang Time, at least the N64 version, is pretty much the arcade version of NBA Jam. It's pretty awesome. Uh, Summers and I played this. It's just fun. I mean, NBA Jam is very fun. This is very fun. Um, so this was five bucks, and it was actually in pretty awful shape. I had to clean it up. I had to swap the bag, all kinds of stuff. I had to clean it up. And this game only works like when it wants to. So I like I'll put this game in, it won't start up, and I'll take it out. I put Puyo in, then I put this game in, and it starts up. So we just leave this in the system now. This is just the NBA Hang Time N64. So if someone wants to play something else, they just have to bring another N64 over. Um, this game is awesome. If you see it, pick it up. My favorite local game store. Um, I picked up these three things. The first is Thriller Safari. So Thriller Safari is TNC Surf Designs 2. So the first one everyone knows is like one of the most common games on the Nintendo. This is a game I never ever see. And w- the w- this game reminds me of an extended version of the um, the Battletoads, that level in Battletoads where you're on that uh, little cart where you have to, it's like ridiculous and gets really fast. This is just kind of like that. and. It's a lot of memorization, and it's a lot of, yeah, I guess just memorization of where you're going. And one cool thing about this game also is at the end of, the ends of the level are like bumpers. So if you hit the end of the level, it actually bumps you back, and you, so it's kind of like going down like a mountain almost. Um, It gets very, very tough. There's also, um, like, these levels in between where... There's like a cup and somebody's hidden under there and she's like moving it with her hand and if you can guess where it is, uh, you get a free life. So yeah, this also has a an actual story, which I'm pretty sure the first TNC Surf Design game did not have a story, but this one does. And uh, it's a good game. I, I definitely recommend this game. And if you see it, pick it up. And then the other two games that I got from that store were uh, two Game Boy Advance games, Wolfenstein 3D. This game, to me, is very difficult to go back to after playing something like Duke Nukem or playing something like Doom. It doesn't control as well, and it's honestly, in my opinion, not as good. I used to love this game when I was a kid, but there's just been so many changes in games over, you know, so long that this is, it's a hard sell for for me. Uh, Some things are also too fast and some things are also too slow, and you can adjust some of the settings, but you can't adjust all of them. Um, It's, I don't recommend this version. And then the the last game that I got there, and this is such a refreshing game when it comes to RPGs. This is Shining Soul 2. Um, this is an action RPG. 
And there's tons of characters you can play in this game, and you can play the game from any of their point of view. Kind of reminds me of um, there was a PlayStation One game where that happened. Uh, can't remember the name. I'll put a picture of it here. Anyway, it's it's a really good game. It's very fun. Um, one thing that's very unique about this game is if you press start to adjust your level up points or to heal yourself or to save or do whatever, the rest of the world is still going. So if you're in a battle and you press start to, to heal yourself with an herb, the people are still still come over and hurt you. They'll, they can kill you when you're in the pause screen. So um, it's unique. Um, I'm still looking for the first one. And with these games, you just have to watch out for bootlegs because they are everywhere. They're just so rampant. But uh, the three of those games together cost me 20 bucks. The last game that I picked up, uh, I got this at Savers. There was one game in the game section, and someone had picked this up, and I found this by like the radio, so they picked it up, looked at it, and then put it down and didn't buy it. And this was $1.99. I don't have it. I've been looking for it for a while, and this is Silent Hill uh, Shattered Memories. And this is complete, and it's in really nice shape. And this was only $1.99. Um, so Vela and I just played this, and the motion controls, whichever hand is holding the Wiimote, is point is like shining the flashlight. And the other one, the nunchuck, is actually moving the person. So it's kind of like the double sticks, but it's actually really hard to get used to, and it takes a while. Um, and there's parts where you're running, which are actually kind of hard to control. But one thing that is cool is this is a game that, if you ever played Until Dawn, there is like that psychological aspect where you're in the, um, the, uh, psych the psychiatrist's office, and they're trying to adapt the game, you know, to... They're trying to, I don't know, they're trying to find the settings of something, that, like the kind of person that you are, and then build the game around that. Um, and that's very cool. This game is cool. It's definitely freaky. There's a lot of like this found footage type stuff that is very freaky, and it rewinds and fast forwards or whatever, and it's, it's a cool game. So if you see it, definitely pick it up, but the controls do take time to get used to. So that's all the stuff that I picked up for this video. Now we'll just talk about some stuff that I've been playing, listening to, and watching i beat finally overcooked this game when it came out was 16 bucks uh it came with all this dlc so uh, the gourmet edition includes the overcooked game the lost morsel and the festive seasoning which are the two dlcs uh, comes with both of them this is a game where it's up to four people where you're in a kitchen and you're trying uh, all the food orders keep coming in and you have to try to make the food as fast as possible and correctly and get it out before they get pissed and leave and then you have to make a certain amount of money to get past the level and then the top of the amount of money you make to get past the level you earn more and more stars. So three stars is the highest, and if you play with four people, it requires you to make the most amount of money. One person requires you to make the least amount of money. Um, it'd be nice if all the DLC was on this disc, but this game was honestly so cheap, and this is a game where I never would have expected it to actually have a physical release. That I mean, it's I, I just downloaded the DLC, and it was free anyway. Uh, you unlock different uh, cooks as you go, and it's just an overall very, very fun game. This is four-player, up to four-player couch co-op. You'll have a blast playing this. If you don't have it and you have a PS4, buy it. Another thing that's cool about this game is you can play two people to a controller. So if you only have two controllers, but you want to play with four people, that's a thing that'll happen. You can play all four people on two controllers. This game is a blast. Get it. There's no excuses not to own this game. So the movie that I watched is uh, Whatever Works, which is a Woody Allen movie and has Larry David, who of course made Seinfeld, and Evan Rachel Wood, who is in Westworld. This movie is not as good as the other uh, Woody Allen movies, but I love uh, Larry David, so it's it's definitely entertaining because he's in it. My biggest gripe of this movie is they break the fourth wall like they do in Annie Hall, but they make they they tr they make you feel like you're an idiot and they keep explaining to you that they're breaking the fourth wall. Like, we get it. You don't have to tell us. We, you don't have to keep making a story around the fourth wall being broken. Just break it and move on. Um, so it's not amazing, but it's not it's not bad. And it is Larry David and he's the man and he's super charming and he's great. So um, yeah, check it out at least once. The CD I've been listening to a lot these days is Thrice, The Artist in the Ambulance. I haven't listened to that CD in so long. Like, I can't believe, like, I can't even think about the last time I even listened to that CD. But, like, I just, I don't even know why I just started listening to it the other day. And it's just a perfect CD beginning to end. Cold Cash and Colder Hearts, Under a Killing Moon, Stare at the Sun, uh, Artist in the Ambulance. I mean, every song is great. Those are probably my favorite standout tracks on it. But, um, definitely, um... Let me know what you're playing, what you're reading, what you're listening to, what you're watching, whatever, and um, yeah, stay nerdy.
that big stock, hear the tires squeal. Red light can't stop, so I spin the wheel. My world goes black before I feel an angel steal me.